Welcome to a GCN Tech Clinic. This time we've got Alex Payton joining me. I will be hosting. Oh yeah, good. Yeah, because I don't know how to answer the questions. You do. No, you I'm know joking. All. I'm joking. Anyway, we're going to dive straight in. This is the part of the show where we get to read out the questions that you guys have sent in. So hopefully we can help you make better change or adapt to your bike that you ride now. Right. Right. Okay. Should we dive into our dive first into question? Dive into our first question. So it's from Quita Nitura. Nitura. They say, hey, do you want to read it out? Yeah, I'll read it out. Oh, go, go on. on then. Hey tech team, is it okay if I use TPU tubes and spare tubes to keep in my saddlebag? I, they run tubeless tires, but I still bring some tubes just in case. They usually bring TPU tubes, but I was recently told that they become too brittle and damaged if they kept in a saddlebag. Now the question they're asking is, is, is true? this true? And no, well, it is true, they are brittle. Well, they can be in certain instances, but I'm gonna I'm gonna say I disagree slightly okay. with someone that's given that information. Yeah. They are gonna be okay to take with you in your saddlebag. Yes, they are a little bit more delicate than say a thick butyl inner tube, but some of the advantages of the TPU tubes is they're super light and they fold up super small, so they take up less space in your pocket or your saddlebag. That said, if ever I'm uh, packing a TPU tube into my saddlebag, I always put it inside a little sandwich bag first because then it protects it. Like a zip log. Yeah, that kind of thing, you yeah. know. There you go. Yeah. I hope that helps. Next question, Alex. Next question is from Teeth. Interesting username. Shall I read this out? Hit me. Say, hi GCN, I need your help. Is there a hack or how to make or buy some mosquito net that I can insert inside my helmet? There's always some flies that goes inside my helmet when I'm riding and I have to remove it to get it away or it bites bites me like a, from a bee. Mm. You know, it gets stung. Uh, I've they, actually had that. Oh, that oh, mm. must be awful. Mm. They say they use a specialised Prevail vent helmet. Thank you. Well, what are their options here then? What do you think? Well, I mean, there's a clear option, which is use a casquette. So that's a cycling hat that's designed to go under your helmet. The only problem that's with that is, is that if it gets hot, yeah. I mean, it's not mesh, is it? It's not mesh. Yeah. But then, so if you're riding in a hotter climate, you can definitely get um, uh, some of that netting material from like a sewing shop that you can sew a into. A haberdashery. Your yeah. Or, I mean, I'm not saying you should do this, but you know they do shower caps in hotels. <laughs> yeah. You, you know. <laughs> not a shower, that's going to be even hotter than a cycling well, cap. True. I wouldn't recommend it, but it's an option, right? I'll tell you what I would recommend, if you want to get a cycling cap, shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> like that. Or you could use one of those Derny uh, helmet hats. Oh, ones that go over the top. <laughs> there you anyway, go. Anyway, we're not saying this is this is going to look cool. But there are a few different options out there. But there is. On a sensible note, I think using any sort of mesh is going to help stop yeah. bugs and flies getting in. We've got a question in from Big Mac Sauce. 2490. What a, what, a, what a name. Yeah. What are the main things to look out for when getting a used bike and to check its quality? Now, I this think is a Ollie good has done a specific video on buying second-hand bikes, but what are the kind of three main points? Well, I would say the most important things to look out for are damage and wear to any of the components on the bike, be that the frame, the gears, wheels, tires, and it's actually like quite simple stuff that you're trying to look out for. And it's going to really depend on the price point of the bike as to how picky you can be. If you're looking at a bike at a lower end price point, obviously you're going to have to accept it's been well used. It might have a few little chips and scratches here and there. But if you're looking at a top spec premium bike, you're really going to want, you want to be quite fussy with this. Mm. And you want to make sure that it's safe to ride and that you're not going to have to immediately invest some of your money into replacing components. And what I would say is, especially if you're going for a carbon frame, make sure you really look closely at the frame yeah. and make sure for any cracks because Carbon frames are a lot more difficult to uh, to repair, and they also lose the stiffness. Yeah. And uh, you know, I think that's a good point to mention. Actually, I like that. Whereas, if you're looking at um, a bike made with metal tubing, it's it's quite easy to see exactly. if there's any damage, but it's not so easy to spot with a carbon fiber mm. frame. Something that I would also take into consideration is just think about the person that you're buying the bike from. Are they? Do they seem like nice to talk to? Are they a little bit shifty? And I'd most certainly avoid meeting up with anyone to buy an expensive bike in a car park or on a street corner. If the person you're buying from, I feel, is reputable and they believe that they're selling you a genuine product, I feel like they'd be happy to meet you at their house. Mm. And that way, they're not worried that they're going to sell you a duff bike and they're going to bring it back. There you go. I hope <laughs> Big Mac sauce that helps um, put sauce on your Big Mac. Yeah, or next help question, you buy a new bike. Next question is from Gezer47. 
Hi tech team, I'm lucky enough to have ceramic speed bottom bracket bearings. Oh, they are lucky. Oh, Good. they're lucky. Lucky. And was wondering what would be the best product to um, to clean them uh, before re-greasing them. Thanks in advance. Oh, they want to clean them on the bike without having to remove the bottom exactly. bracket. Exactly. Okay, so like a, a quick service basically on the bike. Can you do that? Yeah, you can do that. So the process I would do, I actually made a video which sort of demonstrates a lot of this stuff. So you're gonna to have to remove the crank, remove the end caps off Which of is the all fairly it's easy. It's fairly simple. Remove the end caps, mm. then to prise the seals off of the bearings, you're gonna to have to have new seals to replace those. And then Can I would you get, not put old seals back on? Not a good practice. Okay. No, get some new seals. Yeah. You're gonna to need to clean out the inside of the bearings. I'd use an aerosol disc brake cleaner, blast out the old grease, any dirt that's mm. got in there. Let it all dry before you reinstall your new fresh grease. Lots of different grease to choose from, just pick out your favorite one. Install. Well, there is actually a ceramic speed. Yeah, ceramic speed, make a selection yeah. of different greases. Um, pick out whatever yeah. you fancy using. Reinstall your new seal, put the end caps back onto the bottom bracket, crank back in, boom, job done. How long will this guy take? I reckon that is home mechanic job easily, sort of 20 minutes, 30 minutes. There you go. You can Get literally a replace, look at them, make them new in 20 minutes. Yeah, job done. What's up next? Next question is from Matt Loopton. They say, hey lads, I'm racing the Maratona del Dolomites uh, in July, and it's gonna, gonna look up look upgrading my road bike for this race. Looking for suggestions as to what bike gearing and wheels to go for. They've got quite the budget there. Now, there's lots of different areas that you can dive into here, but what I would probably say first is don't immediately think that you need to upgrade and buy a whole new bike mm. because there's lots of changes that you can make to your bike and your body position. But and you, mind, you do have a, you know, a, yeah. a good starting point. Yeah, if you've got an okay starting point, yeah. because the changes between one sort of premium bike to another, we're talking small changes, mm. but I've actually made a little list of some things that they can start to look at and focus on here. Now, in terms of gearing, Maratone is a very hilly event. Yeah, so you're going to look for a, a compact chain set? Yeah, compact chain set. Large cassette? Yes, large cassette. Now, depending cassette. on what group set you've got on your bike, you could go to an 1134. 11 Some group sets, yeah, 1136. You want to make sure you've got the easy gears to make sure you can ride up the hills and have a cake. Okay the course. last thing you want to do is get bogged down in a heavy, you know, and really struggle using all that muscle power. Instead, yeah. you want to just dance on those pedals. You want to dance on the pedals like Alberto Contador, <laughs> apart from that day that Ollie dropped him. It would we'll move on. <laughs> but so, because the event is particularly hilly, some of the main advantages where you can save time and your effort is by reducing your system weight. Biggest proportion of your system weight is yourself. So if you're able to like lose a little bit of body weight without going crazy or doing anything drastic, then that is a significant save for free. So you can focus on yourself, then focus on removing some weight from your bike. Some of the biggest weight savers on your bike is going to come from your tyres, your wheels. inner tubes and your wheels. And I would suggest doing them in that order. Inner tubes, tyres, wheels. Yeah. And, and in regards to tyres? Yeah. I would probably go for, it's, it's personal preference really, premium tyre and latex inner tube mm. or just go for a nice tubeless setup. And then what about a 30 to 40 mil depth tire, uh, wheel? Yeah, I think that probably offers the best balance between weight and aerodynamics for an event such as this. And I'd also look at some tight fitting aero clothing, which might sound silly to some people, mm. but from some testing that Ollie and I did the other week, the advantage to be had from changing your tires, inner tubes and your clothing far outweighs any saving you can get from upgrading just your bike alone. There you go, Matt. Yeah. I hope go. that helps. There is a whole lot of information, so make sure you pause this video and then you check out and then yeah. you can even go back to it. But I really hope that helps. I've tried to make it clear without yeah. going really, really in depth. But there's a yeah. whole load of videos that you can really get into depth and the geekiness of it. Come yeah. On. Next question, who we got? Carlos Parada. Hello, Manon and guys. Yeah. Oh, hi, Manon. Hi, Manon. <laughs> Uh, no, if I inflate my wheels with helium, will I have less rolling resistance and make me save fewer watts? F make me save a few watts? No. No. The average, what, helium balloon yeah. carries about 14 grams? Yeah, we did a little bit of research on this, mm. didn't we? So I'm guessing the amount of helium that you can get inside your tyres is not going to be drastically different mm. to that of a balloon and 14 grams saving. Is, is marginal. Yeah, just tip like a little bit of your water bottle out. Yeah, or it's like, <laughs> you know, take off your fingernails. Yeah, or have a wee before you go cycling. Yeah. Take off your, that's a tall technique. <laughs> take, I just, 
Take off your fingernails. Sorry, I just I was I was watching a World War II documentary. Anyway, moving on. Last question in from Dean Niche. Would you guys go for rim brakes with electronic gears or disc brakes with mechanical shifters? Rim brake, electronic gears, easy. Yes. Me I too. tell you what, I absolutely love electronic shifting. And I quite like I, riding a rim brake bike as well. Oh, I just can't go back from electronic shifting. It's so easy. And the press of a button just yeah. seems. And you'll be surprised how much you actually change the gear. Yeah. I'm mindful that I don't want to sound a bit, little bit posh and pretentious here. Well, you are posh and pretentious. Two things that should never be used to describe me. <laughs> I'm, I'm very down to earth. Don't look at me with that face, man. I'm not posh and pretentious. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what I would go for. There is no right or wrong answer here, but I think for the aspects and characteristics yeah. of a bike that are important to me, yeah. That would probably just about edge edge it for me. Yeah, you, you're I in am, agreement. I'm in agreement. Yeah, I'm in agreement. But certainly not a wrong answer, and you just got to prioritise what is important to you the most, yeah. and then choose your bike and equipment accordingly. Yeah, which yeah. sews up this week's GCN Tech Clinic. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, or you've got questions that you want to ask, make sure you get in touch in that comment section below, and hopefully you'll get this guy, this guy. No, yeah. Ollie to answer those questions. We'll see you in the next video, or he will. Um, anyway, let's catch you. Comment down below if you want to hang back. Oh my god. Right, you go and cut your fingernails. Yeah, I'll take him <laughs> off. <laughs> Ciao! <laughs>